Okay, um, about three weeks ago, we did the four primary producing boxes. I mean, they could produce a lot more than they are, but these are the ones that had the herbs in it. So there's four boxes in there. They're two and a half feet tall by four and a half feet wide by 10 and a half feet long. So we uh, decided to go ahead and let's see if I can actually take a peek. So we have a heater in there. You can see it down there. There. It's on auto oscillating. So it turns all by itself. It stays uh, estimated 70 degrees in here. So you can see we got turnips and um, beets growing in here. I don't see the beet red stem yet, but they're growing in here. So we are making a an effort. Excuse me. I got to build a door casing. Put some bricks on that. I got to build a door casing in here so you can just go through the door instead of having lifting up this plastic like this. And my wife and I, so we did the first installment of uh, having a high tunner about three weeks ago. We just did this one today. We had to go over to the park around the corner from our house to uh, tape this plastic because we didn't have the room in our garden to do it. So the plastic run is about 42 feet that allow for the drop, allow for the, the drop in the curve to come down. And then they use this extra plastic to build a door casing and that way I can just go in and out the door without having to keep lifting the plastic up and down. That's a headache. But right now, I'm not gonna complain because it's protecting the garden beds that we're trying to still grow things in. Temperatures get around low 40s, mid 30s here in uh, North Las Vegas, Nevada. And let me introduce myself. Hi, this is Gary. And this is our Back to Eden Urban Homestead. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, sometimes people may think, how can you have a lot of work to do on an urban homestead? We have a lot. Uh, the fruit trees, I gotta go ahead because we didn't get that much fruit on them last season. I'm gonna dig around the, the base of the tree, put some phosphorus and calcium, probably near January before the sap start running. So all these trees, you can see the ones down here. I'm gonna tried to extend their life, but otherwise I'm in the mood of yanking them out. And our grapevines are down there. It's four grapevines and Cabernet Sauvignon uh, grapes with seeds in them. And some of these potting plants will be going inside the uh, high tunnel now and uh, to protect them and uh, so we can still eat off of them. So I just uh, my wife and I just did this high tunnel. You see how I'm moving this plastic. I apologize for that. And so here are the beds. They're identical to the first bed I showed you. So I got to prep these beds. You need to put these two to sleep for the winter or put some stinky rich soil here in Las Vegas. That's actually compost from animals clean compost and some worm castings and some Jadam liquid fertilizer. You can go online. I may leave a link at the bottom so you can look at Jadam liquid fertilizing and um, so we can extend our growing season and hopefully we'll be successful. This is the first season that I've really been kind of perplexed about uh, our growing efforts because the past seasons we've always got Plenty of bountiful greens, even way into the winter. When it got below freezing, we were able to uh, able to get, you know, a lot of greens. And this season, to be honest with you, we're struggling. So uh, we've saved a lot of money over the years growing uh, our food. We haven't been real successful in getting a lot of like squash and cucumbers and, and tomatoes. I've been disappointed in that area. So hopefully, I don't know, when it starts warming up, I may just go ahead and put some um, plexiglass for windows so I don't have to always go inside. I can still look, so I'm going to do that. So I'll film that when I'm doing it. It's only going to take a few minutes. Uh, and I don't know. We still have the shade cloth up. 
that I got from Grower Solution. You can ask for Dusty, it's who I deal with. I think that's out of Wisconsin. So I'll leave those up and that'll help because cold air sinks. So maybe that'll help, you know, that cold air from getting to the plastic, but we do have heaters inside, so everything's gonna be fine. So I just wanted to give you um, a short uh, preview of what, you know, we've been doing here in North Las Vegas in our Back to Eden garden. And I got a lot of soil remediation to do. I got compost down there that's not gonna really heat up now because it's cold. And um, I know what I have to do to bring the heat. I'd have to introduce more mass. There's our wood chips over here. It was eight yards, really, when we had it. It was, when we had wood chips, they were all the way up to that wall and they were all the way out here. So we've been going through it, you know. And this compost pile, I gotta work with it some more, but last year I made good compost. This year I'm not really encouraged by it, but it's because I've had so much to do other projects that I've kind of kind of let this go. So I gotta catch up with it. Maybe during the spring, I can bring some heat. Um, these some mint over here. Um, before I put these wood chips down here, in this, during summer, I mean, this ground just stayed barren because it didn't have a cover. The earth needs a cover like our body needs a cover. So this is a peach, not peach, but a pear tree. It didn't bear any pears last year. So I'm gonna dig around all these fruit trees. This is a lime tree and see if they have fruit. Otherwise, I'm inclined to take them out, but they got leaves on them. So that means they're, they're alive still. The roots are still alive. So it's just a matter of putting the right calcium and phosphorus down so that um, you know, the tree will produce. So I think that's it. And my Jadam liquid fertilizer will do that. So these trees I'll be digging around. This really gave us a lot of figs last season or this past summer. So I'm happy with that. The semi dwarf apricot tree didn't give us anything but maybe five. And this tree was almost 20 feet tall. I cut down the branches. As you can see, the tree's been cut down. And these are uh, propagations of my wife took from some of our other plants to kind of increase our yield. Uh, this is an apple tree. It gave us about 12 apples and that was it. So I'm hoping next season after I fertilize, and as I said before, I'll be digging down around the root area and putting some fertilizer in the ground to hopefully, organic fertilizer. To, this is a mulberry tree, black fishing, um, black Persian uh, mulberry tree. Gave us a lot of mulberries. So this tree continues to give us fruit every season. So this is um, a short five minute, almost 10 minute video in the background, jazz music, fair play. Somebody else plays music. I, I'm not gonna be censored by uh, these platforms telling me I can't play music. There's a fair play usage law in effect that if you record music playing, they cannot uh, take away the music out of your video. But when they try, you have to bring that to their attention, then they back off. This is a Jadam liquid fertilizer. And the, these are just, we just bought from our contact. We get containers I'll be burning. Um, using those as a burn can. I got to put a chimney on here and some openings so it can cause a draft. I'm burning this that we got from the park, but I'm not, they're needles. The reason why, because I'll use the ash to put into our, our raised garden bed. So, but the leaves are falling down at the park. I think I may take some of this back, which is where the city workers had this at the park and get over there and rake up the leaves and bring the leaves back. Uh, needles are burned too, but I, I just, I don't know. I may burn some of it, but anyway, uh, these are, containers here a jadam liquid fertilizer in them different from fruiting to general purpose jadam liquid fertilizer um, I'm gonna have one for fish this is for veggies and this one is um, fruit parts too and this one is we had a excellent cannabis crop we do have license to grow cannabis and so I'm using this for all the cannabis parts in there so I can fertilize our cannabis plants when we start growing those again, which is too cold, so you can't grow any. Anyway, I could grow some and I grow tents, but I like outside better. 
Um, so anyway, I'll be using this can. This will be for the damn uh, fish fertilizer. We'll get some fish parts and some leaf mold and some uh, non-chlorinated water and put in here. And when I, spring comes and get hot again, it'll be ready by midsummer. It only takes 10, 14 days, but it's better if you go months without touching this stuff. But it, it'll still be use, usable at about 14 days. Um, but it's better that you let your dam sit over weeks or months before you use it. That means getting it ready prior to the season you're going to be using it in. And this one is going to be sulfur to dam fertilizer. So I have to order that. And this stuff is very hot. It's a chemical. But it controls a lot of pests and uh, disease problems in plants. So you can look at that up. And I may put that down at the bottom of the link also. So anyway, again... My name is Gary, and um, my wife's name is Lolanda. She's always with me. Whatever we do, she's always been right there. She hasn't uh, made excuses not to get her hands dirty. She, she's an excellent master gardener. She's an excellent certified herbalist. So look for our sites on herbaltriage.com. Uh, also, the Epicurean and Herbalist on YouTube, and our Back to Eden Urban Garden and our new channel, um, Genesis to Revelations Epic Explorations that we're trying to build up that we just opened up this uh, July. So stay tuned, people. Again, grow your food is very serious out here. And as you already know, the shortages in the store and trying to buy food, the price is so high. The scripture tells us a day's wages for a loaf of bread, and that's where we're at now. So if you don't believe in your creator, give him a try. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim. Elohim is the divine title he gave to himself. To create the creation. And Yahshua, who is the Holy Spirit, also walked the earth plane before he was put on the cross again. But he's always been the Holy Spirit. So guys, keep that in mind. Love one another. Trust one another. And make partnerships, people. Because you cannot make it on your own on any homestead. You have to trust somebody. I know racism issues has always been an issue with people. You know, I am kind of disappointed that I don't see a lot of African American um, people out on homesteading on YouTube, but we continue to search. But we have to partner. No matter what the race is, we have to get along. We have to grow our own food. We have to start our own co-ops because the government will shut you down as soon as you become thinking you're free. So you have to fight to keep that freedom. And I believe in the Second Amendment rights. Take care, people. Love you. Blessings in Yahweh.